Since transitioning from his 15-year professional NBA career to becoming an ESPN analyst, Kendrick Perkins became one of the most controversial figures in sports media. Known for his brash opinions and provocative commentary, Perkins managed to quickly climb the ladder, securing his spot amongst the most recognizable faces in basketball analysis, such as Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. Even during his basketball career, Perkins often struggled to be taken seriously, sometimes merely because of his demeanor, and other times as a consequence of his subpar performances and frequent shacked in a fool appearances. Ever since he started his broadcasting career in 2021, Kendrick Perkins can't seem to avoid constant backlash and criticism, be it from his peers or basketball fans on social media. But where does this hatred and animosity for Perkins stem from? In this video, we are going to be examining Kendrick Perkins' analysis, insights, and whether he truly stacks up against the competition. First off, let's start by looking at instances where Kendrick Perkins' analysis has missed the mark. Whether it's predicting game outcomes or evaluating player performances, Perkins hasn't always been on the money. Take for example this take about Chris Middleton and the Bucks, a little before they won a championship in 2021 with the Greek freak averaging 35 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists in the final series versus the Suns. Perk, what did Middleton prove last night? That he's the Batman of this team, and Giannis is the Robin. And look, it's okay to be the Robin, but when it matters the most, we have seen time and time again that Giannis, is, Giannis freezes up in the big moments. Or a more recent case, where Perkins confidently claimed that the New York Knicks are going to beat the Indiana Pacers in Game 6 of the 2024 playoffs second round. The Knicks have won this series. I believe they closed it in six, to be honest. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Two games later, Tyrese Halliburton and the Pacers sent Jalen Brunson and the Knicks home, winning games six and seven, proceeding to the Eastern Conference Finals. With Perk continuously saying these, sometimes plain stupid takes on live TV, it's no wonder that ESPN is slowly losing its credibility in the world of basketball analysis. Another area where Perkins falls short is in providing depth to his analysis. While some analysts break down plays, statistics, and strategies in detail, Perkins often offers surface-level insights. And when faced with a counter-argument, Perkins just hits you with his signature, Carry the hell on! When comparing his analysis to that of his peers, it becomes clear that Perkins sometimes lacks the depth needed to truly understand the intricacies of the game, which makes him an easy target for Charles Barkley, Shaq, and the inside crew to constantly make fun of him. Furthermore, Kendrick Perkins isn't immune to biases and personal opinions, which can color his analysis. Whether it's rooting for his former teams or favoring certain players, biases can cloud his judgment. While it's natural for analysts to have preferences, it's important to recognize when those biases might be influencing their analysis. An example of this leads us to probably the worst basketball take of all time, Kendrick Perkins implying that the MVP voters are racist. When it comes to MVP voting, 80% of, of the voters are, are white Americans. 20% uh, uh. In this instance, Kendrick Perkins is actually trying to make a case that MVP voters are racist by bringing up very few cases in which white players won the award. And the other reason for his claim that Nikola Jokic didn't deserve the MVP award is that he wasn't top 10 in scoring, which was proved to be a very insignificant stat, given that even Magic Johnson wasn't top 10 in scoring when he won the award in 1987, 89, and 90. While JJ Redick bombarded him with actual good arguments, Perkins just stood there, making weird faces and acting like he's talking nonsense. They favor white people. You I just not, said that. I you just, not, yes, you did. I yes, did you did. Not, I did. Yes, not, you did. That I is did exactly not, what you implied, not, Kendrick I Perkins. Not, that is exactly not, what you implied. I, I Secondly, not, hold on, did, hold on. I did not call. I stated the facts. I stated the facts. Furthermore, he had another historically stupid take, claiming that Nikola Jokic stat pads in order to get his triple doubles. I'm watching Jokic pass the ball. And I'm watching his guys catch and shoot, catch and shoot, no hesitation, good or bad shot. Are you sitting here and saying, Nikola Jokic is having his numbers padded? Is that what you're saying? You heard what the hell I said. Saying this about probably one of the most humble and unselfish players the NBA has ever seen, even got Stephen A. Smith to interfere and verbally confront him. 
After all of this, when JJ Reddick confronted him about the nonsense he just said, Kendrick Perkins decided to act like a fool and deny everything he just said a few minutes ago. Naturally, Perkins in the first take received a ton of backlash for this. Notably from Charles Barkley, who had this to say about the matter. This crossed a line. JJ is the only person to challenge Perk last week. I'm glad he did it, because when I first heard it, I said, man, this has got to be one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. The public response had gotten so bad, even the first take itself had to issue an apology for Perkins' claims. In conclusion, Kendrick Perkins' move from NBA player to ESPN analyst has been a train wreck. His loudmouth style and hot takes might have gotten him some attention, but they've also shown just how out of his depth he really is. His predictions and player evaluations often miss the mark, and his lack of in-depth analysis makes him look clueless compared to his peers. Perkins's blatant biases and ridiculous claims have only made things worse, turning him into a joke rather than a respected analyst. ESPN's credibility has taken a hit because of him, and it's clear why many see Kendrick Perkins as the worst NBA analyst around.